Well, it's for me. I'm Kevin Pereira. I mean, it's come on. It's always for you. Thank you. And Thank I'm you. Olivia Munn. Yeah, I am. It is Thursday, August 2nd, and we are coming to you live from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. On today's show, will competitive gaming ever catch on stateside, or will we just have to settle for poorly translated StarCraft tournaments? We're going to find out in the loop. Then, the CIA trained us to interview, and we're going to mm. use those skills when we sit down with Matt Damon and the rest of the cast of The Bourne Ultimatum. Plus, who says you have to wait to the future? We'll show off the smallest three CCD camcorder ever, lasers, and, get this, a personal hovercraft in a future tech toy edition of Attack This. And we love when people do dumb things, but we love it even more when they do them on camera because it lets us show you great moments in de-evolution. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a good one. But first, it's time for us to put the internet through a gym class lineup and take the top five stories of the day. See, only the best get picked for team around the net. You know what I'm saying? Team oh, ATN jerseys? Yeah, we should have jerseys. Just saying. We're All right. cheap. Starting off the list at number five today is a prime example of what happens when celebrity murderers open themselves up oh. to direct <laughs> contact with the general public. Celebrity murder. Well, I alleged. Like that. I like that. Alleged That's celebrities something. is what I meant. Two words sound good together. And you guys, normally there's a healthy barrier between us and them, whether it's steel bars, a television screen, or a wall of intimidating guards. Sure. But O.J. Simpson stripped all that away when he agreed to answer live questions on News Market One. It's an internet television station. You know of it. Now, I think we can all learn a very valuable lesson from this. Kevin, what's your question for OJ? Hi, good show, dude. Um, my kid, my kid Chris was wondering, do you think it was a bigger feat to break 2,000 yards in one season or slice two necks in one night? All right, Alex is listening to us in Ohio. Hey, Alex. Dude, can you hear me, Juice? Yes, I can hear you, buddy. Yeah, uh, remember when you played for the 49ers? Yeah. Yeah, did you kill Bill Walsh? No, I don't mind. I mean, yeah. you know, people can say what you think. If they, if it's negative or what, as long as they're serious about the question. Mm -hmm. Well, well yeah. it seems serious. And it was a very serious question. Like, 2,000 yards is a tough accomplishment. Yeah. You're going to be sweaty. You're going to be breathing heavy. But it, Two necks. I mean, but then you do it in one night, and you yeah. wash up. That washes off. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So AstroTurf lasts forever. You get a burn. Yeah. You're screwed. So I think you just answered the questions. 2,000 yards. OJ actually stayed pretty calm throughout the Q&A, which I, I, I got to give him credit for that. But seriously, how many people do you think died once the cameras were shut off? <laughs> yeah, you know they hit the cutlery from Craft Services. That's uh, all I'm saying. Uh, Actually, our legal department says that I'm not allowed to answer that question. Since when do you listen to them? Never. I bet they all died. Thank They're you. all dead, the except for that the, the little chubby interviewer. Oh, <laughs> he's cute. He's, cute. he's staying around. Um, but I am instructing you guys, the viewers, to check out MN1.com tomorrow at 5 p.m. Oh, Central man. Time as the juice takes calling questions again. Yeah. It is sure to be what we... Um, What's that word? We netizens. Netizens. That's it. We call internet gold. Guys, if you can get like an attack of the show shout out or something in there, call shenanigans oh my gosh, on the juice. Like, awesome. let's, let's make it happen tomorrow, please. That would be awesome. Shenanigans on the juice. Good. <laughs> in at number four today is a video from WCBS TV in Sunrise, Florida. There, the local news team and a store manager uncovered a, a dangerous scam in action. Huge scam. Now, a woman apparently slipped and fell on some olive oil, mm -hmm. but the suspicious manager fired up his expensive state of the art security system and caught something else. Take a look. Watch as she picks up a bottle of olive oil and tries to twist off the cap unsuccessfully. Puts it back on the shelf. She returns a short time later, quickly opens a new bottle, and pours it on the floor. Watch again as she returns to the spot and lurches forward. This is the so-called bottle. He has retrieved the bottle of oil and has it stored in a plastic bag. He says he's glad he spent over 30 grand on a sophisticated surveillance system a few months ago. At the end of the day, he paid for himself. Because Things like this, if you don't have a, a system that will record everything, you lose money. Hello, Captain Obvious. Yes, and they, they just put up the camera like a month ago. And well did. worth the money. Wait, oh, wait, 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 okay, okay. Oh. Now, olive oil spill, okay, that was sad, actually. Yeah. But did you, did you catch what happened at the I end there? I think I might have. Play, I think I might have. Let's play back just the ending okay. of that clip. Just the end. At the end of the day, he paid for himself. Hello, Captain Obvious. Oh, you know what Hello, I think we just Captain heard? Captain Obvious. I think we just heard yeah. our Zang of the Day. Ah, yeah. uh, local news. And at number three today is the proud grand sport of blindfolded kickboxing. 
Yeah, seriously. It sounds like it should be like a setup to a tale of a, like a frat house tragedy. Or something you did on Saturday night. Yes, which I did. But it's actually an officially sanctioned form of fighting in Thailand. Yeah. And once again, the traditions of a foreign country provide America huh. with much essential laughter. Everything's legal he in Asia. He just kicked him country. in the back. And Who he kicked, kicked the air. Oh, man. Remember when Van Damme did this in Bloodsport? Yeah. So he remember, was grabbing like koi a, fish out of a pond. He wasn't actually But then they just threw the salt in his eye and he couldn't see. And then he was like, you know what? I don't need my sight. He had that total recall it transformation. Was awesome. Great. Yeah, that's a great sport. We should Didn't do Didn't he do here. the splits and punch somebody in the Grendel? You know what would be great? Blindfolded wiffle bat. Oh, let's do it. Let's you put do one it. on and I will beat you mercilessly with it. <laughs> you didn't have the... I'm taking names. Oof. I'm taking names. Jeez, Gavin, a, all type of Anthony back there, you know. Vinny, I got you. I got your number. Good. And number two today is a new game from Japan for the Nintendo DS, and we all know how innovative Japanese gaming mm, can be. I love it. The tentacle train simulator yep. is so good. But this is a new title uh, called Face Training. It's probably like the next best-selling DS title. It uh, comes with a camera, yep. which is kind of cool, and encourages a Japanese exercise called facening. Yeah, now this is actually true because when I was modeling over there, the, the people, they actually tell you to do this because it's good for your face. Now the theory is by doing facial exercises, your skin becomes more elastic and younger looking. Now, get a good look, because this is what everyone on the J-Trains will be doing in about probably two months. Give it. You did this one, and it helps you double chin. Does it, I mean, have, did you actually do that stuff when you were over there? I did. But you're not supposed to do this one because it gives you wrinkles. It gives you wrinkles. That's what they told yeah. me when I was modeling in Japan. Weird. But we actually got our hands on an import of the game. What did you model? <laughs> it, was, uh, what, what did it, you model? it was for Baby Gap. <laughs> was everything, everything was, like, really tight, but it was cool. Like, I think that's a thing there. It was really baggy, really wasn't trend. it? Yeah. It was more baggy. I'm, I'm skinny. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, we got we the got import of hits. the game. Okay, we got it in. We have a yeah, we got DS. The game. We pretty much all are. Mm -hmm. I have to say, the instructions, I know a little bit of Japanese, right? Enough yeah. to be dangerous. You taught me quite a bit. Yeah. But even with that limited knowledge, I had no idea what I was supposed to do. The arrows didn't make any sense. Complicated? And, well, look, okay. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> The confusing thing was the ring. Like, I got the, the cartridge and the camera, but I didn't I understand why it came last. with a ring. What, so. what was that? That's a facial exercise? A apparently, it's, it's popular on the Internet. <laughs> Finally, topping off said Internet Day is a video from a Comic-Con panel with Mr. Kevin Smith. This is great. Now, the nerd, a tour, was taking questions from the audience when someone asked a critical but some, somewhat fair question. It's a valid question. Yeah, now, Smith proves that in this country, first, you get the movie. Yeah. Then you get the microphone. Right. Then you make fun of the guy who tries to be cool by making fun of your work at Comic Con. Do you ever plan on making an original movie without rehashing any of your old characters that tell them stuff? Yeah! yeah. yeah. In Red State, we're doing a real horror movie. That's kind of way different than the other stuff I've done. And I swear to God, I'll get around to them as soon as I pull my out of your mother's ass. So. Well done, sir. He's, he's a clever guy. Yeah, and he was just calm, and I'm going to just destroy you now. Yeah. In front of this entire room. <laughs> That's uh, the best way. Well, getting pwned at Comic Con is bad enough, but getting pwned yeah. by Kevin Smith at Comic Con is even worse. Oh, uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. But I have to say, getting pwned at Comic Con by Kevin Smith and then having that clip put on the interweb, life is over. Yeah. Over. Your life has been permanently zanged, actually. That's right. For even more zangs, head over to g4tv.com slash around the net and sign up for the Around the Net podcast. Does that mean that if somebody zangs you, it automatically It's a permazang. Out? Well, it's like you're canceled, so nobody can ever zang you even more. It doesn't matter. Yeah, like you can't get more zang than Kevin Smith at a Comic-Con so panel what, you're on like, YouTube. You're, you're just screwed. Yeah, it's done. You're done. Right. I mean, you can just down the tracks, not across. Oh. Right now, it's time for the only news you need it's to know. Good, though. good advice. You're welcome. Here's Layla Cayley in the feed headlines.
Thanks, guys. Here's what's coming up in the feed. First, the U.S. government is at war with console models, and they've made sweeping arrests across the country. Plus, find out what anticipated PS3 title just got delayed until the fall, and we'll let you know which digital camera is getting recalled because it might cut you up. It's all coming your way in just a few minutes, but first, back to you guys. Thanks, Layla. Now, last weekend, CBS aired the latest attempt at trying to make professional gaming work. Yeah. It was dubbed the, uh, the World Series of Video Games, apparently, and the event... Uh, well, broadcast players competing in World of Warcraft and Quake 4 and, oddly enough, Guitar Hero 2. Yeah. We're really the only network that can do gaming right. Thank you. So stop Arena! trying. Any... Okay. Okay. Well, this event... <laughs> there was the one viewer. It was hardly a success, <laughs> and the sport still struggles to gain national attention. But if you go to Korea, StarCraft com competitions are all the rage huge. right now. Yeah. They're huge. Yeah. Well, we want to know what you guys think. Do you watch televised professional gaming? Come on now. Yeah, we want you guys to vote our website, g4tv.com slash AOTS. Hey, I see you all voting. You're really enthusiastic. All right, there you go. Vote at our website or you go to G4T. You vote uh, with your text message at G4TXT. Of course, it's 44898 to vote. And you register for AOTS Live News Alerts as you do every day. Now, coming up later, we've got the trailer for Shine G4. All right, this is a Chocolate Rain remix for Attack of the Show. Chocolate brain, some say dry and others feel the pain. Chocolate brain, a baby born will die before the sin. Chocolate brain. Hey, I'm liking it, but you're saying I mean, no? Well, it just sounded like Homer Simpson for a second there. Did it? Oddly enough, yeah, it dipped into Homer. I liked it. I thought it was good. But I, I enjoyed it. I heard remix, so I thought maybe he was going to put in some Attack of the oh, Show lyrics yeah. or something. Well, then make it a real remix, Bill, but thanks oh, anyways. Oh, snap. Well, I, I just said what you oh, said. And I know, but I, I wanted him to think that you said it, really, because oh. I, you know, I oh, like Bill. I did Bill. say it, Bill. Ouch. Let's move on. Yeah, we have to. It's, right now, it's actually time for the only news that you need to know. Here it is in the feed. Thanks, guys. I'm Layla Kaylee, and it's time to start the feed. The voting community suffered a hit yesterday thanks to a major bust by the government. U.S. Immigration and Customs agents served 32 warrants in 16 states, specifically targeting those who sell mod chips and install them in consoles. The investigation was called Operation Tangled Web, and the arrests were the result of a year-long investigation. Officials claim that piracy cost the industry over $3 billion a year. The names of those arrested or any other specifics have not been released at this time. It looks like it's time to dust off that copy of Talladega Nights because another PlayStation 3 game has been delayed. Despite the announcement that Lair was finished and the discs were being manufactured, Sony has just announced that the game has been pushed back three weeks. The developers claim that last-minute fixes for the game's online leaderboards were the problem, but many are speculating that early negative reviews are the real culprit. Either way, it looks like we'll have to wait until September 4th to find out for sure. And in other unfortunate Sony news, the company has just recalled over 400,000 digital cameras. The recall affects CyberShot cameras, specifically the DSCT5 model. Again, that's a DSCT5 model. Apparently, heat may cause the bottom casing to warp, creating a sharp edge that could cut your hand while taking pictures. Sony says they will replace the part at no charge, so check your camera's model and serial number just to be sure. Mac users waiting for the next version of Microsoft Office are going to have to wait even longer. Today, Microsoft announced it will miss its full shipping target for Office 2007, and instead it will hit shelves in January 2008, in time for the Mac World Convention. Microsoft usually releases Mac versions of its software six months after Windows versions, but this delay will push the Office delay to almost a full year after Office 2007 for Windows. And finally, a pair of classic video games are getting dusted off for the DS. Arkanoid DS, the first official portable version of the game, will include an attachment controller that mimics the knob of the original arcade cabinet. The controller will plug into the Game Boy Advance slot of the DS, and the game will have 140 levels. The game known as Super Dodgeball here in the States is also getting a DS version. Niketsu High School Dodgeball Club will feature eight-player wireless matches and customizable teams and players. Right now, both games are due only in Japan, but American translation is very likely. Let's hope so. Well, that's it for today, but don't worry, the feed doesn't stop here. Stay tuned to G4 all day and look for the feed to at the bottom of your screen. We'll have all the news you need to know as it happens. I'm Layla Kaylee, and you've just been fed. Back to you guys.
right, thank you, Layla. Now, um, it's time for some horribly, horribly depressing news. Take two revealed today that Grand Theft Auto 4 will not be released this October. Instead, mm -hmm. the company is aiming for a date during the second quarter of 2008. Wow. Now, Take Two's Chairman Strauss Zelnick stated that certain elements of development proved to be more time intensive mm. than expected. Mm. You can take that, you guys, any way you like it. What does that mean? This is what it sounds like when doves cry. While we digest all of that, let's take a quick break. Attack of the Shell will return in the very near future, probably the second quarter of 2008. It's terrible. Can competitive gaming ever become the future of sports, or is it destined to stay out of the limelight? The Loop takes aim. Plus, Matt Damon Welcome back to Attack of the Show. Earlier in the show, we asked you if you watch televised professional gaming. Well, according to you guys, 68% of you say that you don't watch. Let's go over to Kevin, who's fragged a team member or two, as he says, on accident. You can't run in front of the barrel, is all I'm saying. Now, apparently, people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars playing these video games. But if a pro gamer competes in a cyber cafe and no one sees it, is it really a professional sport? For years, media companies have tried to create a professional sport out of competitive gaming. Leagues keep popping up, players are signing contracts worth hundreds of thousands, and TV networks are broadcasting the events. Last weekend, CBS broadcast the World Series of Video Games, becoming the latest gaming event to take on the sports arena. However, some are saying that the sport is boring to watch and impossible to follow. Despite the fact that the events only appeal to a select group of hardcore gamers, pro gaming fans say that it's only a matter of time before the gaming community supports the competitions as much as they do the games. Can pro gaming be as successful as professional sports, or are the majority of gamers uninterested in being just spectators? Get your peanuts and polygons, it's the loop. All right, my guest tonight from New York, chairman and co-founder of Major League Gaming, Mike Sespo is here, and G4's very own Adam Sessler joins us as well. Welcome to The Loop, everybody. Mike, I'd like to start with you since this is, I mean, this is your domain, to say the least. What did you think of the World Series of Video Games? Uh, Kevin, you know, I thought it was an interesting attempt. I like the fact that it's on TBS. One of the core problems of the whole issue that we're talking about tonight is that what most um, of the other leagues out there and media companies are trying to do is create a spectacle out of competitive gaming before it's even really become a sport. Um, what we try to do at Major League Gaming is maintain authenticity with core gamers, maintain cre credibility by really focusing on having all of the best players play the best games in the most competitive setting. Sure. You know, that's not the case for the CBS show. I mean, having people do silly guitar tricks with Guitar Hero is funny to watch, but that's not professional gaming and it's not a sport. Yeah, Adam, do you think at this point these, these televised gaming events are really just a parody of actual sporting events that we see televised? Um, it, it comes across really as kind of older executives who don't get video games, and this is how they think us gamers like to see things, and it's really unfortunate. I, I think one of the other problems, I think Mike kind of touched on that, is that we can't use the older way of looking at how we televise a traditional sporting event and think that can immediately be applied to how we would do gaming as a sport. I think that really the, the Internet or some of the ways that you say you, you look in PGR3 with a spectator mode where people would just kind of feed into the game mm -hmm. might offer a better way instead of being fed just one feed from the first person perspective in Unreal Tournament 3, I don't think that you really get a, a good sense of what's going on. It's too chaotic, it's too frenetic, it's, it's not easy to follow. Mike, do you think that's, is that a problem of the people that are covering the games, or is it just, is it just an inherent flaw of the games themselves? Well, look, I, I think, you know, you're talking about a lot of other things that are going on out there. At Major League Gaming, we've been doing this for over five years. We were the first ones to broadcast it on television. We had a seven-episode series last year on USA Network that over two million people watched. So it's not like nobody's watching this. And we produced it in a very sports format style. So I, I agree with what I'm saying. In some respects, you can't do it the traditional ways. And the reality is, you know, we have a huge broadband business where we're where we're showing video uh, of our pro competitions all the time, and, and there's significantly more people watching it through broadband, through places like Xbox Live Marketplace, all these new digital uh, platforms where people like us who are gamers are, are watching video. It's not just appointment television anymore. Sure. So I think that's where the model shifts. 
Well, I got to throw out the, the old Korea argument because it always gets brought up. Sure. Adam, I'll, I'll start with you. Like, will you ever see this catch on like it has over there? I mean, it's it's as huge as the NFL or Major League Baseball is in the States here. I, I, I don't think it fits. I think, you know, most countries have their very unique cultures, and Korea definitely has a very, very unique culture. Um, I think StarCraft became so popular due to the fact that you had a lot of people who were online with computers, but the computers themselves weren't that technologically advanced. And in, in that country, it is a smaller country and more homogenous. When one thing catches fire, it can catch fire that much faster. I just don't see that model happening here with any one particular game or with you know, gaming as sport. Period. Well, Mike, can something like that even happen here in the States when it seems like there are? I mean, I know MLG is its own thing, but aren't there like 45 different professional gaming leagues all playing 600 different games with different brackets and different rules? Like, doesn't it have to be standardized to even stand a chance here in the States? It doesn't have to be standardized. One, one league has to be the preeminent one, and that's what Major League Gaming is. I mean, you know, if you do a, a look at the online traffic for all the competitive gaming and pro gaming sites out there, the Major League Gaming sites have about 90% of the market share. So where we are setting the standards, that, that part is true. I think the difference is in Korea, and, and I've been there a couple of times to see what's happening, it's a totally different thing. Just like sports in the rest of the world are different than the NFL, the NBA, the NASCAR. I mean, we just create and consume sports sure. in a completely different way in America than the rest of the world does. But, but the Mike, what about, is, what about the televised people... aspect of this? Because I know you just said MLG, you guys were the first to put it on TV, so obviously you want that market, you're going after it. Will this ever take on as a televised spectator sport? I, well, I look, uh, you, like you I said, ahead, two, yeah, I mean, two million people watched our series last year on USA Network, the, the largest cable network. I mean, it, it, there are people watching it on television already. I think it's also quite a bit different than the Korean model, like what Adam said. I mean, it's not pro gaming per se, it's StarCraft. Right. Um, and they're really creating it almost like a game show kind of atmosphere where there's, you know, literally guys in like silver lame outfits and, <laughs> and they're kind of treated like boy bands with tour buses and groupies and stuff. It's a whole different flavor. It's not, nobody from who's used to traditional American stick and ball sports would go to South Korea and look at what they're doing with StarCraft and say, wow, that looks just like the NFL, right. but done with gaming. It's a totally well, different Adam, thing. Adam, when am I ever going to see you like in a packed sports bar throwing a PBR at the big screen because you know Team Manhammer didn't defuse the bomb in Counter-Strike? Like, is that day going to come? Um, uh, well, only if I have a child on Team Manhammer may that actually <laughs> happen. I hope that doesn't. I, 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 th I think the issue is, is that for people who can consider themselves gamers, only a small portion of them are those who are playing online in the competitive type games that you see on these televised events. And so you've taken kind of the, you know, a, you have a niche of a niche, more or less. I don't know if that group is going to really expand over time. Those who like Unreal Tournament, I don't think that game is going to catch on much bigger in any time in the future. Yeah, there's a lot who like it, but without that generated interest in those particular games, I don't know if you can really grow that audience all that much. All right, I want to give the final think, word to Mike very quickly here. Uh, Mike, in the next five years, will I ever like pour a bowl of Wheaties that actually features a professional gamer on the cover? Will we get to that point in five years? Absolutely. And, and I mean, the early indicators are that people from the traditional sports world, like Gilbert Arenas, who's, who's been very involved with Major League Gaming for a long time, are flocking to us and helping us build out what this is. And what we're doing is making sure that the gamers themselves, the, the pros that we have in our league, are actually bigger than the game. It doesn't matter what the game is. And, and that's one of the points I would disagree with Adam, with Adam on. Is it's not really about the game and whether you're familiar or you play that particular game. It's the teams and the personalities that are playing them who, who are becoming the pros of the next, the next great sport. Well, if my mom can name a professional gamer, or if I see a kid riding down the street with a professional gamer baseball card in his folks, then then I'll agree that we've arrived. But for the meantime, I want to thank my guests, Mike and Adam, for keeping us in the loop. Appreciate your time, Thanks, Kevin. All right, now you guys, we must take a moment to worship at the altar of consumerism and run some commercials. But you guys, don't go anywhere. Attack of the show will be back in just a couple minutes. Hold on tight.